So James, last night I watched the movie A Beautiful Mind with Russell Crowe and I think the movie qualifies to be a Vedanta movie because in the movie Russell Crowe has to discrimi discriminate between the empirical world like you and me, the table, the camera, whatever and his subjective world because Russell Crowe in the movie had a schizophrenic disease and he saw people just as real as we are but they were only existing in his mind and I had, I had a feeling this is a great movie this is like Vedanta discrimination basically uh, yeah actually I saw, I saw that movie uh, several years ago and I thought it was a, an excellent movie uh, for the same reason, mm. uh, because it, um, uh, it, our analysis, our Vedantic analysis of the three states of reality apply to um, that film. And there, it's very important for spiritual people, because many spiritual people, even though they're not schizophrenic, like uh, Russell Crowe was in that movie, uh, they're, uh, they believe that what they experience inside themselves in their subjective world uh, actually exists outside in the objective world. Mm. They can't distinguish between their subjective reality and the objective reality. Yeah. So, and this is a huge problem. And we, so we have a teaching that um, that deals with this topic mm -hmm. to help the people discriminate clearly or understand clearly what is their, their creating and what is Ishwara's creating. Mm -hmm. uh, in Vedanta we say there are three, uh, three realities or three orders of the one reality. The Paramartika Satyam, that means non-dual consciousness. There, there's just one consciousness. There are no subject and object operating and there's no field of existence and there's no individual people there in that. That's the called the absolute reality or paramartika satya or the self or awareness or consciousness. That is what, what, what we call satya in Vedanta. That's right. That's called satya in Vedanta. Satya means that which is real and true mm -hmm. and which doesn't ever change. And then when you take Maya into account, uh, you get two more satyams, apparent satyams, we could call them, apparent truths. One is Ishwara's creation. That's called the empirical reality, mm -hmm. or Vyavaharika satyam. And that, as you point out, is that's the realm of science and of everyday experience. That's the realm of of traffic in the, uh, in the city, that's the realm of noise and sound and sights and feelings, that's that uh, all of these objective things that we can actually experience and that everyone experiences. They're not just personal experiences. The river is going by now. Mm -hmm. Anybody who comes here can see that river is going by there. There's nothing subjective about that. Yeah. So that's called Vyavaharika Satyam. Then, when Maya is operating, the, the Jiva is created. The, first the material world is created, and then the Jivas are created. Now the Jivas interpret reality. They have their own creation. That's called Pratibhasika Satyam. Oh, yeah, that would be Russell Crowe seeing people who are not actually there. Yes, that's a dramatic example. Mm. We, we can't really teach schizophrenics yeah. and people like that who are actually seeing things all the time and totally, but for a spiritual seeker or an inquirer, uh, the web of, of conditioning that the jiva go, undergoes from childhood uh, becomes an interpretation for what is happening in the real world. Mm. In other words, the jiva uh, is projecting his or her own feelings, beliefs, and ideas onto the world 
and thinks that those things belong to the world mm. when they really just belong to the jiva. And so in both of these, Patibhasaka Satyam, the subjective reality, and Vyavaharika Satyam are mitya. Mm. Neither one of them is, is, is absolutely real. They're apparently real. That's why we call them satyams. Yeah. They're all three orders of reality. Right? The non-dual reality, and that is the purpose of Vedanta, is to discover that you are non-dual awareness. Mm. Uh, and then you live in the non-dual reality as non-dual reality. Mm. Whereas people who don't know who they are, they live in Vyavaharika Satyam or Pratibhasika Satyam. Your heart knows realistic people. They only only live in this material world, in the, in the world of objects. And perhaps they project a little bit. And then other types of people are totally introverted and subjective, mm -hmm. and they live in their own subjective world. And those people have a very difficult time uh, in life, yeah. because they can't, their own creation, they, they live in their own creation and oh. they do actions based upon what they see, but what they see isn't actually there in the reality and other people don't see it. Mm. Like for example, uh, seeing extraterrestrials, ETs. Now, if, they're, if, if ETs are objective, then everyone can see them. Yeah. But only certain types of people see them under certain circumstances when their mind is in this pratibhasika dimension. Does it also apply to like climate change? Because some people don't see it, some people see it, and some people um, go even further. Yeah, yeah. Like the climate change deniers, for example. The scientists have measured They're measuring the climate all the time. They're measuring the temperature and all these things. And they can tell you objectively that, the, this, in, fact, in fact, this year was the hottest year on record. Mm. That it was, Since we've been keeping records, this year is the hottest year. Now that means, obviously, the climate is always changing. But what climate change means is that there's more rapid changes going on in the climate. Now, some people can't see that. Do you have to, according to, to, to your analysis, you have to be an introvert in order to actually understand the subjective reality. Like, climate change is a subjective thing. Everybody has a different interpretation yeah. of climate Every, change. Everybody has a different interpretation, that's right. Yeah. right. So that's why many do not care about climate, climate change because... They can't see it. They can't see it and it doesn't matter to yeah, them. And like, for example, extraterrestrials. Many people don't care about extraterrestrials because they don't see them. Yeah. Understand? So that means that all of these objects that Rishwara creates are subject to interpretation mm. by jivas. We, jivas, unless their mind is completely clear and still, and they've done a lot of work to remove their projections, their, their pratibhasika satyam, uh, all of jivas are interpreting reality according to their own beliefs and opinions and so forth and so on. Mm. And trying to, and the problem with uh, religious people, for example, who see Jesus, yeah. uh, that's, a, that's pratibhasika satyam. Mm. That's their own projections. Because if Jesus existed in, in the way they see it, then everybody could see Jesus. Yeah. But only those people with that particular conditioning or that particular kind of mind can see Jesus. Mm. This is why trying to get somebody to, see, if you're living in Pratibhas, in your own Pratibhasika Satyam, getting somebody who doesn't, isn't in the same projection that you're in, they will never see it. Hmm. But people that are in Pratibhasika Satyam are very defensive about it when they're, when they're uh, communicating with people who, whose minds are rooted in Vyavaharika Satyam. Yeah, so subjective people, we could say, are very defensive. Yeah, because they, they feel attacked by objective people, yeah. by people, scientific types of people who, who only believe what they see and hear and smell and taste and touch. Yeah. So there's always this conflict going on uh, between 
uh, and this same conflict goes on in yourself all the yeah, time. The subjective versus the empirical yeah, uh, reality. The, the, yeah. That's why it's so important to have the scripture because it points us beyond the two. Absolutely, because then if you can look at it from the point of view of non-dual awareness, you can see clearly what your projections are and what Ishwar's projections or Ishwar's creation is mm. and distinguish between the two. Yeah. We're not saying you have to get rid of your subjective projections. You just have to know that you are projecting. Yeah. But people in the Pratibhasika dimension, they don't believe they're projecting. They think that what they're projecting is actually there. Yeah. That's the problem. So that's, an, that's a very important teaching. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> okay, thanks James. You bet.